Welcome to Storytime, brought to you by the OWS PsyCon 2019, the online book event of the year. Let me get this straight. You were dumped, then you were picked up, all in the same day. Then the one who dumped you proposed and the one who picked you up dumped you, also all in the same day. That about sums it up. Wow. Optical Leaf looked out at her true life image. Wow. What gets me is just the timing. How is a girl supposed to think? No clue, Leaf told her mini self. I'm not doing this. It just keeps happening to me. I hate that. Like I have no control. And the secrets. I have to tell someone there's going to be a conflict, but what can I say? Onyx and I don't have sex because he's too busy starting a war? That's believable. That's the truth. And what do I say about him anyway? We were never officially anything. You were starting to care for him. I was. I do. If anybody would take the time to look, there's a lot to care about. You took the time. Both leaves jumped. Onyx stood in her doorway. To call him beautiful would have been to lessen the attraction. He transcended the word. He transcended the world. Leaning against her doorway, emanating confidence and arrogance, majesty and mystery, he came from a distant galaxy, glowing radiant and powerful. He was more beautiful than merely beautiful. His true description remained wordless, as there were no words to adequately compare. Had Leaf realised she was holding her breath, she still would not have released it. It was a breathless moment, watching him, watching her. Watching him come to her, stalking, anticipating her movement, stopping it before it began. And then he was there, pulling her to her feet, invading her space, and drawing her close enough to breathe her in, to kiss her. But he did not. He held her to him as if he would kiss her, but did not. She trembled, nervous with emotion, nervous with anticipation. I'm sorry, he whispered. Piercing grey eyes held her in place. Dropping his voice an octave lower, he said, When I am threatened, I respond by striking hard, striking first. I cannot promise it will not happen again, but I do not mean to see you hurt. I'll try not to do that to you. Standing there in his arms, his power vibrated through her, shaking her to the core. She inhaled his scent. His masculinity made her mouth water, but it was his candour that touched her. She raised a trembling hand to his cheek. He leaned into her caress. She brushed her lips against his. I'm over it. She was. She felt his relief and then a resurgence of his power as he took possession of her mouth, possession of her. His kiss wasn't light. It was demanding. It was delicious. He kissed her again, thoroughly, and once more softly, savouring the taste of her desire. How did you get in here? Leaf didn't care how, as long as he was here. I put a silencing charm on your alarm system, into her giggle, he said. It's not like I don't know how it works. How could you? I created some of those spells. It's not like I haven't been in your head. She laughed again, not at all offended. You'll have to teach me that. I intend to, and on that note there are a few things we need to discuss. Onyx hadn't released her. He didn't intend to. What should we discuss? Onyx Narpole is in your bedroom. You are wrapped around him like you were his skin. If ever there was a topic for discussion, that would be it. You changed everything, Leaf. We're different people now. I didn't do anything. That she wanted to stiffen, but he held her too tight, too close. You did. He took a deep breath. He took her breath. As far as he was concerned, her breaths belonged to him. My parents trained me. My servants do my bidding. My friends imitate me, and the council wants to fix me. But you accepted me. You are the only one who accepts me as I am. The good, the bad. You've seen it all, and you accept me. You know my past. You can guess how I'm going to turn out. Now you've changed everything. Every phrase was a sword of honesty, stabbing her with jolts of compassion and excitement. She didn't remember winding her arms around his waist, but they were there, luxuriating in the feel of the iron hidden beneath his shirt. How are we changed? He got closer. How could he have gotten closer? There was no closer. It's real now. We're real now. One more deep breath that started out as hers, but ended up as his. I need to hold you tonight. Don't turn me away. Please don't turn me away. Leaf wasn't sure about this side of Onyx. His intensity seemed focused completely on her, channeled completely into her. Let me stay. Let me talk. I promise to give you every answer you're looking for. I promise, from now on, I will put my extensive talents to use, making you happy. Onyx, what are you saying? If you really have accepted me, Leaf, don't turn me away. It wasn't an option. It wasn't even a consideration. I'll never turn you away. As soon as she said those words, she knew they were true. She felt a slight rustle of movement. Instead of looking at him, she studied their reflections in her mirror. A pair of emerald green silk pyjama pants rested against Onyx's hips, 
Silver boxers peeked from above the waistband, just below her fingers. His feet were bare, as was his entire upper body. She wore his pyjama top. That and her panties and nothing else. His shirt hung to her knees. The sleeves covered her hands. Her hair bushy and wild. She wouldn't have felt sexier if she had been wearing handmade lingerie. Her heart rate increased tenfold, and somewhere in the recess of her mind, her logical self realised her knickers were THE knickers. Bloody hell. You're safe, he seemed to be reading her mind. I doubt that. He buried his head into her neck, grazing her with his teeth. She tilted her head back, giving him room to leave his mark. He licked and nibbled, branding her as his. I'm not interested in sex. I am, but it's not my focus. I don't care what your focus is. I'm not safe. You're safe while we talk. Afterwards, you'd better hope I fall asleep. With an unexpected sweep of his arm, Onyx pulled them down across the bed. He hauled her against him, yanked up the covers, and concentrating on eating her shoulder. She snuggled against the chiseled wall of his chest, her butt rubbing his groin. I am so not safe. No, you're not. Quit wriggling. What are we doing? We're trying to keep my dick attached. Quit wriggling. I don't think this is the most effective way to accomplish that. Leif laughed and juggled some more. This is insane. You'd better talk to me. This is a death wish. She couldn't keep still. She was in Onyx Narpal's arms and he was in her bed. They were so guilty. They hadn't done anything and they were still so guilty. Mmm. Onyx gave his current love bite a lick. Speaking of death wishes, you've got nine hours to decline West's proposal. What? Nine hours. What? Nine hours. She had forgotten about Bin. She had forgotten about everything and he she didn't feel like remembering. Bin. Oh yeah, him. Thinking about Bin while Onyx's erection pressed into her back was wrong. Why nine hours? Because if you don't, in ten hours he's going to turn up missing. Leaf giggled. You are not nice. No, but I am giving you fair warning. Nine hours. Suppose I decide not to decline. Then you'll be responsible for ridding the world of one useless cookie maker. Nine hours. He buried his nose in her hair. You're calling Bin an elf? Really? For your information, I already told Bin off. Oh, faster than thought, Onyx flipped her over. He pressed into her, kissing her deeply. I knew I could count on you. Being in Onyx's arms put Leaf in a happy, teasing mood, among other things. Who said I turned him down? Leaf Harper? Shame on you. He slid his hands under her shirt. His shirt. You're engaged, and you're in bed with me. Who says I'm engaged? Her hands raced across his chest, eager to touch everywhere. I do. You do? Leaf had become far more interested in his hands than his conversation. As fast as before, he flipped her back over. Behave. Hey, I'm not a pancake. Onyx wasn't listening. He buried his face in a fresh spot on her shoulder. This story time was read by Timothy Bateson and brought to you in conjunction with the OWS Psycon 2019. OWS Psycon runs from May 17th through May 19th. You can find us at owspsycon.ourrightside.com. Again, owspsycon.ourrightside.com. We have events happening across all genres. If you are a reader, you cannot afford to miss this event. You never know. You may just find your next best read.